These are fire tornadoes. They look amazing and they're surprisingly easy to make, so let me show you how we did it. So there are two ways to make these. The first one's the easiest, uh, using some fairly household things. We've got a spinning plate here, or a Lazy Susan. Uh, we've got something to put our fire in, a little uh, metal dish. And then we've got this, some gauze, some metal mesh. Uh, we've wrapped it round into a tube, stapled it where it joins up, uh, and that goes around the middle like that. And that's essentially all the equipment you need. Uh, we just need to add some fire. Um, okay, so to add our fire, what I'm using is some ethanol, but of course you could just use lighter fluid as well. Um, uh, and because it's going to be spinning around, we don't want fire flying everywhere, I'm going to uh, use some cotton wool buds to soak up the fuel and keep it in our dish. Uh, now, safety first, of course, we're going to have fire, so I've got my goggles on. There's a fire extinguisher nearby, but essentially all I need to do now is light our fuel, put the gauze on, and give it a gentle spin. There we go. So the second method looks a bit more elegant. You don't have to keep spinning it, but it's a bit more complicated to make the equipment. First of all, you need to be able to make two halves of a tube uh, like this. Uh, so I started with a wine bottle, and I've got this little gadget which scores a mark around the circumference of the wine bottle. It doesn't cut all the way through. You have to pour hot and cold water alternating uh, onto the glass so that it cracks, and you're hoping and trusting that that crack follows your score mark. So that left me with a tube of glass which I needed to cut in half. For this I used a Dremel, a rotary tool with a diamond tipped glass cutter on it. This takes quite a long time and I did get through quite a few wine bottles before I got a set of uh, half cylinders that I was happy with. We're going to do the same setup. We've got something here to hold a little bit of cotton wool. We're going to put our fuel in, uh, in there. Going to light that up and we're going to position our two half cylinders around uh, the, the fire source with a little gap and offset. And it takes a little while to get the position just right, but you should find you can get yourself a fire tornado. So what causes this fire tornado effect? Well, first of all, let's think about the fuel when it's burning on its own. It's uh, liquid alcohol, it's evaporating, uh, and it's combining in a chemical reaction with the oxygen from the air and giving us fire as it releases its energy. The fire, of course, is hot, so that hot air is going up. And as it goes up, it draws cool air in from the sides. That feeds the flame with oxygen and keeps it going. Good, but not terribly exciting. When we put the flame inside the spinning gauze, however, the spinning mesh collides with the air being drawn into the flame and sets it spinning. Similarly, with the offset glass, the air is being drawn in from either side in opposite directions and curving around the inside of the glass, again making it spin. In both setups, as the air gets closer to the centre where the flame is, it spins faster and faster. This is because of something we call the conservation of angular momentum. In just the same way as an ice skater or someone on an office chair will spin around much faster when they tuck their arms and legs in, the air in the middle is travelling a shorter distance, so it needs to be moving faster for angular momentum to be conserved. It's these spinning air currents that create the fire tornado. Not only do they make the flame turn, but they feed in oxygen, fanning the flames. And they also draw more of the evaporated fuel upwards from the source, giving us a taller flame. So we didn't just want to leave it there, we thought we could jazz these up a little bit. So here I've got some uh, metal salts dissolved in methanol. I've got some boric acid containing boron and lithium carbide with lithium in it. Both boron and lithium were first isolated as elements by the RI's own Humphrey Davy and uh, they do some interesting things to our flame. So if I add uh, our boron solution here, we'll get some nice green flames like this. And if I add our lithium solution on this side, it should give us a nice kind of pinky, purpley flame, like this. So now we can get some slightly more interesting fire tornadoes. And this is what happens if we add copper sulphate and copper chloride to our flame. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed our fire tornadoes. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then subscribe to our channel. And if you want to support what the RI does, you can do that on Patreon by clicking the link above. Thanks for watching and bye.